pigmentation resembles that of children elsewhere. And this gives the second hint to solve the puzzle. And it is called neoteny. We'll come back to that word in just a moment. But to solve the puzzle, the first step is to find out just when did this happen? When did the inhabitants of the region of the Baltic Sea lose their melanin? Well, turns out, it must have happened after 16 millennia ago. Because the Baltic region was covered by ice then, and nobody lived there before then. In fact, it must have happened after 13 millennia ago. Because cave art from that time always shows normally pigmented people. Notice in this painting from 13 millennia ago. The hunters are the same color as the deer. And this is common to all paintings of human beings at that time. On the other hand, it must have happened before four and a half millennia ago. Because deep pigmented people first began to appear in art at that time. These Egyptian statues were painted in 2613 BC. They portray Prince Rahotep and his consort Nefret of the Old Kingdom early 4th Dynasty. Notice that he is brown, but she is pink and has lost the pigmentation. And so the next step in solving the puzzle to ask, well, what exactly happened in Europe between 13 millennia ago and four and a half millennia ago. Well, what happened was the invention and spread of agriculture. Before 10 millennia ago, people everywhere lived by hunting and gathering. And then, almost simultaneously, cereal growing was invented in four spots around the globe. In Iraq, wheat, barley, rye. In China, rice, in Nigeria, sorghum, and in Mexico, corn, or maize, as they say it in America. Now, what does skin tone have to do with eating cereal or grain? Well, it turns out, even in darkness, humans get vitamin D from eating meat and fish. Otherwise, humans could never inhabit the Arctic. This USDA chart shows the, the vitamin D content of various foods. You'll notice that all meats have some vitamin D, and fish have very high amounts of vitamin D. But grains have no vitamin D at all. People who eat grains do not get vitamin D from food. They must get it from sunlight, or they don't get it at all, and have extraordinarily high rate of miscarriages. Now this usually works out fine, because grains only grow where it is warm, and this means that only in latitudes with bright sunlight do people switch to eating grains. But there is one exception. We'll come back to it. People who live in low latitudes near the equator, where they can live off of grains, they get plenty of sunlight. Even though their diet is deficient in vitamin D, they synthesize it from the sun. And people who live in dim sunlight, far away from the equator, well, they can't grow grains there. And so, even though they cannot synthesize vitamin D in the skin because the sun is too dim, they get plenty of vitamin D from the meat and fish that they eat. The exception? Turns out there is only one spot on the planet where grains will grow despite subarctic sunlight. This is a satellite infrared image of the Atlantic Ocean. And you can see the warm Gulf Stream crossing the Atlantic Ocean to wash on the shores of the Baltic Sea. You see, that spot on Earth is where the warm waters of the Gulf Stream wash ashore. The Baltic Sea is the only place on Earth where ocean currents keep it warm enough to grow grain despite the dim sunlight. Here's another skin tone map showing that same blob around the Baltic. When the inhabitants of this region switched to eating grain about six millennia ago, they suddenly got insufficient vitamin D to survive and their miscarriage rate skyrocketed. They had stopped eating mostly meat and fish in a place where sunlight was too dim. 
to produce vitamin D in normally pigmented skin. And so they gradually adapted by retaining into adulthood the infantile trait of extreme paleness. And blonde hair and blue eyes were other infantile traits that were just swept along accidentally. Now the retention of infantile traits into adulthood is a very, very simple adaptation. It's a very common adaptation, and it can happen virtually overnight, at least in a geological sense. Because all it takes is the delaying of one trigger gene that changes all of these characteristics, and that's the degree of melanization, into adulthood. And so this very simple adaptation could, that could happen very easily happened in enough people that they are the ones who were able to survive in the region. And eventually, that neoteny, that retention into adulthood of that deep pigmentation, spread throughout the region because it was more successful in this odd place where grain grows in dim sunlight. Now, for more on this topic, visit backintime.com slash essay slash p equals 4. That's where you'll find the complete text of this thing with all of the citations and references and all of the peer-reviewed stuff, in short. Well, I thought that was pretty interesting. I mean, I'm blonde hair, blue-eyed, and white as Moses' hand, so I thought it was kind of interesting to actually hear the explanation.